<laughs> and our third main topic today comes to us from Darren uh, Shustra, who writes, Good morning, John and crew, and a special hello to Christian if he is in studio today. Thank you. Uh, he is, as a matter of fact. Yes. I just read an interview with Chris Pratt where he calls Jurassic World Dominion the finale of the Jurassic Park franchise. I always thought this was just the conclusion of the Jurassic World part of the series, but uh, that the franchise could continue. Do you think this really is the end of the giant dinosaurs? All right, Darren, thanks a lot for sending that in. And yeah, look, I am getting actually a lot more excited for this movie than I ever thought I would be. And, and I've been surprised every time a new piece of marketing comes out for this when I realize just how kind of pumped and excited I am for, for this franchise. I think the trailers have been really good. The CinemaCon presentation of Jurassic World Dominion was not so good. No, but that? they just showed a trailer. No, and uh, no, and a trailer, a minute and a half trailer. Like we sat through a two and a half hour Universal presentation, and then finally, br first of all, Bryce Dallas Howard came out. We love Bryce Dallas Howard. Um, who Jeff else? Goldblum. Jeff Goldblum came out, and they did their little shtick for a bit, and that was fine. And then they showed literally about a 65 second clip that 60 seconds of it we had seen already got it it's like really they showed us a half hour of light year <laughs> so anyway whatever but i still am very very excited for this movie but you do have to ask yourself the question even just after jurassic park two or three how much longer can this franchise go i mean there are dinosaurs oh no the dinosaurs are loose how many times can you go back to that well i mean so here we are. We've got the next one. They're bringing the old cast and the new cast together, which I'm very excited about. I think they're going to have great chemistry together. And yeah, so Chris Pratt kind of mentions that maybe this is the end. This is what Chris Pratt had to say. This comes to us from the folks over at Screen Rant who wrote the following. And Chris Pratt says, you know, you go to like fireworks display, like the 4th of July or New Year's, and there's always the finale. You're like waiting for it. And then boom, you're like, oh, this is it. This is the finale. I feel like the whole movie is that it's like 30 years in the making. It's uh, it, this is the sixth Jurassic film and it's the end of this franchise. I really do think it's the end. You've got the legacy cast back, Sam Neill, Laura Dern, Jeff Goldblum, plus the cast of Jurassic world all converged. Our storylines are converging in a way that is very much a finale. And that is Chris Pratt's comments there. Now it should be noted that the director of the Jurassic world, who directed Colin Trevorrow, Trevorrow, right. First, Trevorrow, one and three. One and three. Trevorrow has said similar sounding things to Pratt in the last couple of months, talking about it as the, the big crescendo, the finale, and all that kind of stuff. But is this truly the end of the Jurassic World franchise? Like Chris Pratt, if you want to get nitpicky about the semantics, Pratt does kind of say in one of the sentences, it feels like the finale. But then in another sense, he says, this is the finale. I'll tell you what, you know, our, our, we got our friend Scott here in uh, in studio with us here today. And Scott was asking me right before the show started, he goes, wait a minute, is, is Pratt being serious or is he just being a dick? And I'm like, you know what? I, I kind of think he's being serious. I actually do believe this is the end of the Jurassic World, Jurassic Park franchise. Because again, I'm like, how many more times can you go, oops, the, who let the dogs out? Oops. I mean, it, it, how many more times can you go back to that? Well, now a great counter argument to that is, what other franchises does Universal have, really? The Fast and the Furious has directors leaving and stars leaving, and I, I don't know how much further they can go there. Um, and they've got Jurassic Park. I'm going to go on this. I, if I had to put five bucks on it, guys, not 50, not 100, but if I had to put five bucks on this, I'm saying, yeah, I think Jurassic World Dominion is going to be the last one. Christian, what do you think? But what's our time period? Because if you would have said in 2001 that this is the end, uh, William H. Macy, he said it's over. You'd be like, okay. <laughs> and then 14 years later, we get another one. Yeah. So, and another reason why you can't say it's the end, the first two, even that crap piece that came out in that last one, that Fallen Kingdom, that made a one point like six billion dollars. A lot of money. If this movie makes one point anything billion dollars, yeah, it might be the last for Chris Pratt. It might be the last <laughs> for, for Trevorrow, but it ain't going to be the last for Universal. No chance. No chance. Like, if, if it is like, again, maybe it is the finale of Sam Neill and all that. As far as where it can go, I felt like, and, and it could have went the Planet of the Apes route in the last movie. And it seems like, I thought that's where they were going in this one, but there still seems like they're doing the same thing that they always do. They're Like you said, they're running after the dinosaurs. Oh, there's one in a the movie theater. They got and, loose. Then, uh... and it's two hours and 
40 minutes or whatever it is good lord but uh but either way the reason i want to see this is for legacy cast they're playing off the nostalgia and they're putting nostalgia together with the cast that we've already got established with from 2015 or whenever the second one came out and now you you have them together but you could go in a place where it's just land of the lost you know that that's where they could go mm -hmm. and wait five or ten years wait yep. for, i so I, just, I will take so you up. And the franchise, and then maybe five, six, seven, eight, you're kind of relaunching. Yeah, again. I'll take you up on that bet if there's no time limit. If there's no, yeah. yeah. See, I mean, with no time limit, even I have to. But are we missing an obvious thing here? What we said, the universe has got two franchises, right? Yeah. They got Jurassic, they got Minions. Vin, I'm telling you right now, Vin Diesel is riding a T-Rex within three years. <laughs> Vin Diesel is riding a T-Rex. Maybe. And out of shape, forgetting his lines, Vin Diesel shows up. <laughs> Riding a T Rex, calls him family, rides in, in space. In space. <laughs> Dinos in space. It's totally going to happen. I love Vin Diesel. Everybody knows him. I, okay, Rob, I don't know. You're hearing about this. It is this like uh, Christian raises a really, really good point about, okay, yeah, maybe this is the end of Sam Neill, Laura Dern, Chris Pratt, Bryce Dallas Howard, Colin Trevorrow, all that kind of stuff. But give it another five or six years when we came across one of the what we thought was finished off eggs and the egg hatches and all the i don't know what do you think is going to happen here well i think look, chris christian makes a good point i mean what is the story and and i think that there's only so many times you can watch people being threatened by dinosaurs however you know the, this this series has been leading up to a world where humans and dinosaurs have to coexist this series had been so many people had written drafts of new jurassic park movies there was one where the military had been um uh genetically engineering dinosaurs to work on the battlefield they've touched on some elements in these in these new jurassic world movies but i like this idea doing a dystopian planet of the apes the the world of human beings is devastated it's fallen because our experimentation has thrown the world into total ecological collapse for human beings and you've you've got dudes riding dinosaurs warring with other dudes i mean yeah. no but in a, i mean i'm in a serious post-apocalyptic water world take your pick planet of the apes yeah. way mel gibson with a can of gas over I mean, his shoulder I, I think though that that would be the, the real question is how do you make that viable mm. who are you who going to start it and how are you going to make it viable but look man if it's going to make a billion bucks just like you said the first thing they're going to do is put it into active development because they already have a number of scripts that they've developed and i think you know the it, why not set the new movies 100 years in the future that could be really interesting after the fall of man. Am I imagining things here? Christian, I think back in the day when we were doing our show, tell me if I'm wrong about this. I thought I remember there being something of a script leak where Universal was kind of thinking about going. They had a script where like the military had weaponized the dinosaurs. They had mounted like weapons on dinosaurs. Yep. Yeah. And that, stuff was like that. Yeah. that was real. That was real. Yeah, oh, it was my. real. I thought they even mentioned something like that in the in the second movie. I can't remember, but they did. Well, Vincent yeah. D'Onofrio shows up at one point. Something like that. Yeah, says, yeah, oh, yeah. So they, they plan it, but that's what I mean is that. So if I'm Universal, I'm like, shut up, Star Lord, because like at at, <laughs> at, at this point, it's like you don't know what we're gonna do. Like we own the property. Yeah, sure, Trevorrow, go t take a walk. Thank you. Or for is it a marketing thing? Is this exactly what they're telling to say? Saying, oh, everybody, this is the big Maybe, finale. Everybody may buy your tickets. Very much so, because I do believe and I agree with him and that he. Th this is the end of the story that we've been following since 93. Right. Um, unless the only way, the only way this is the end, if there's like a massive nuke and all the dinosaurs are dead. Because if there's one dinosaur left that pops up at the end, that, that's not, it's like, oh, well, they can, that's, that's it. Plus, you know, they run into the same problem we reported earlier this week about the Fast and the Furious franchise. Bryce Dallas Howard and Chris Pratt, their quotes go up right. with yeah. each film. And, and it becomes the point where their, their salaries are so they're so expensive that they price themselves out of a viable movie. Like the movies are only going to make so much money, even if it makes $2 billion, but you can't pay your cast 200 million each to be in these movies. You well, know, still... Vin Diesel would disagree. Well, yeah. I mean, the, 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 he also starts to get points and stuff on movies. Yes, on absolutely. Do. These are very expensive propositions and these are very effects intensive. They're not cheap movies no, to make, but they make a lot of money. They do make a lot of money. Question yeah. is for you guys. What do you think about these words coming from Chris Pratt? We've heard some others from Trevor as well, kind of alluding to the fact that this might be the end of the Jurassic Park franchise, period, and stop. Do you think maybe it is for this part, and like in maybe six or seven years, they do relaunch it again? Do you think, no, this is it, it's done? How many times can the dinosaurs get loose? Whatever you guys think, jump down to the comment section below and let us know your 
thoughts. We want to take a second to thank the sponsor of today's video, Manscaped. Now guys, you know, I love Manscaped. You've heard me go on and on about the Lawnmower 4.0 and mm, that body wash. I love it so much. And so we got to ask, guys, have you started your spring cleaning yet? The carpets need cleaning, the drapes need dusting, and your lawn needs mowing, gentlemen. And you guys know Manscaped is more than just one product. They have a whole lineup of products to help you guys feeling, smelling, and looking your best. And so Manscaped is proud to present to you the Performance Package 4.0, which is the only tool that you need to keep your boys looking, smelling, and feeling good this spring. Now, to start off with, you get the Lawnmower 4.0. Guys, we have talked about this. What is wrong with us? Why have we for so long been using these terrible tools that were never meant for cutting our hair down there? The razor clipper things on our electric razors. That's barbaric, guys. You need the Lawnmower 4.0. And then there's the Weed Whacker. You guys have heard our own Ray Aura talk about this thing. He loves using it to get that hair in your nose and the ear hair hair. And then they offer lots of other stuff like the Crop Preserver. It's an anti-chafing ball deodorant and moisturizer. The Crop Reviver. It's a spray-on toner for your balls. And of course, they've got the perfect grooming tool for your face with the Plow 2.0, the perfect razor for the finest shave on that face. So guys, get 20% off plus free shipping with the code CAMPIA. That's C-A-M-P-E-A at manscaped.com. That's 20% off and free shipping with the promo code Campia at manscaped.com. It's time to throw out your old hygiene habits and upgrade your life.